Welcome back from the break. Hope that it was refreshing and that you're ready for the final topics of this lecture. In this, this lecture will conclude by looking at other demands on the vehicle, we will look at performance and drivability, and we will finally look at an optimization problem where we will work with gear rate optimization to improve the fuel economy to see how much can be done by just changing the gear ratios. We will also finish off with software tools that can be used to estimate the fuel consumption of vehicles. Jumping in to the demands of the vehicles, we have performance and drivability. The one demand that we have been talking about so far has been the fuel economy, but that must be complemented by other factors that influence whether or not an owner will like the vehicle. The main problem with these factors are that they are not so easy to define and quantify. For passenger cars, some examples are top speed of the vehicle, maximum grade for which a fully loaded car reaches the top speed, and acceleration time from standstill to reference speed. So these are examples of performance and drivability related parameters that influence whether or not an owner will buy the vehicle. Now when we're designing towards these, we would like to get some simple first ballpark numbers and we will in the next slides go through these three the top speed the maximum grade and acceleration and how these are coupled to the design of the engine and its performance when we look at the top speed performance we once again start with the vehicle motion equation and we look at at top speed the air drag is the dominating loss just to illustrate this a little bit more we will jump back to a previous slide slide number 18 here we see the vehicle velocity and here we see the wheel force required to reach that velocity. And as you can see here we have the rolling resistance that is down here. And when we come up to the maximum speed here we see that the dominating component to reach the maximum speed is the air drag. Because it's the air drag that is increasing beyond this point up to that point. So we can with good confidence say that at top speed it's the air drag that's the dominating loss. And when we look at the power requirement as a function of velocity we see that the power requirement of the engine gets coupled to the desired top speed like this. Then we have some design parameters that also influence the details of the top speed but the dominating effect is still the maximum velocity. One interesting thing is this cubic connection shows that if we double the power of the engine we only increase the top speed with 26% showing that the race for performance is attenuated by this cubic increase with velocity. The next performance factor is the uphill driving where we are looking at the inclination and in this case we assume that the dominating effect of the inclination is the road slope. So that the road slope term dominates the equation. And then we can get an estimate of the maximum power once again of the engine. Uh, that gets connected to the velocity we would like to have and the slope that we would like to reach this velocity. We can get improved numerical results by looking more carefully at the gearbox and the gear ratio selection. As you have seen already for the top speed performance of uh, the engine map and the gearbox. The third point is acceleration performance. There we think that all energy that we're putting in is going to build up the kinetic energy of the vehicle. So we assume that all engine power will build up the kinetic energy while we're neglecting the resistance forces. In this case we look at the acceleration and we say that the average power during the acceleration will be used to build up the total kinetic energy. So with the velocity given up here we can get the energy and with our design parameter for the desired time we can get the average power. Now here we make a simplification that we say that the average power that is delivered during an acceleration is the same as half the maximum power of the engine. This comes from assuming that we have an internal combustion engine with approximately constant torque over the speed range. And we also include some non-accounted losses. Uh, the result with this equation, so once again, it's the power of the engine that is the main design parameter and it's connected to the velocity squared. Before looking at the results, we turn once again to this simplification and motivated with the torque diagrams. If we would have a constant torque, 
we would be here and the power would be linear. So we have the maximum power here. And when we're doing an acceleration, we're starting down here. So if we would think of doing an acceleration from zero to 100 kilometer, we would start down here, then we would go up. And when we pass the maximum power, we would switch to next gear. So we're not able to utilize the full power during full acceleration, but we will hopefully get more than the half power during the acceleration. But then we also have some time to do the speed synchronization while we're changing the gear where we have a loss of torque. This loss of torque during accelerations is one reason for why automatic gearbox vehicles often have better acceleration performance than manual gearbox vehicles. Let's look at the results from this simple estimation. T0 is estimated as follows from this equation compared to the real data that is published in the data sheets for vehicles. We see that it's a surprisingly good agreement. I was surprised when I saw this agreement myself the first time, considering that it's based on the simplifications. So the main message is that this encourages us to make simplified models and analysis of the performance. Now I come to the final item for this lecture, which will be on optimization problems and on software tools. We have different types of optimization problems that occur in the vehicle optimization and vehicle design. We have structure optimization where we're selecting, for example, what type of hybrid should we use? Should it be a series hybrid? Should it be parallel hybrid or a regular vehicle? The other type of optimization is parametric optimization. That's when we have decided the basic structure, but we're wondering, for example, what engine size should we have or what battery size or what electric machine size should we have? So we're changing the size of components or we're changing the gear ratios of the gearbox. Finally, we have control system optimization where we're wondering how should the system be optimally controlled, especially if we have some degrees of freedom like we have in a hybrid. And this is the main topic of this course to work with is control system optimization. The next thing we will look at is parametric optimization of the gear ratios as I have advertised previously in the lecture series. Here we have driving cycle specification as you recognize, but the cycle does not prescribe what should the gear ratio be for gear number one, gear number two, gear number three, gear number four and gear number five. So these are free to select. So now we're thinking about how much can we improve the fuel economy by just adjusting these numbers. The path to solving this problem is that we implement a simulation model that calculates the total fuel consumption over the cycle. So we have a simulation model that simulates the temporary design that we have come up with. And the temporary design is a design with certain values for the different gear ratios, IG, for the five different gears that we have in the vehicle. That means that we have five different design variables. These design variables we would like to use to minimize the total fuel over the cycle. And we set up a constraint which says that the model and the cycle must be fulfilled. When we have formulated this problem, we use an optimization package to solve this problem. And finally, we analyze the solution to, we start by looking at how the fuel mass is calculated over the cycle. In this example, it is done with the help of QSS tool where we have the complete vehicle model. And since we're evaluating a lot of different design choices, you can understand that the speed of execution of the model will influence how long time we have to wait until we get a design that is optimal. So efficient computations are very important. The structure of a code looks like this. The simulation model is evaluated down here at the bottom. And then we have built up a skeleton of functions so we have an optimization master that sets up the problem defines an initial guess and then it calls uh, the function f means which is f mean search so we search a minimum for this function and the function that we will utilize is called optimization function and this one then uses the selected gear ratios to simulate the cycle the simulation returns the fuel consumption that is returned up to the optimization tool that iterates until it's satisfied. And finally it returns results and we display it. In your hand in assignment number two, we will use a similar setup like this, where you will implement the model down here 
and you will be provided by the search algorithm that will call your functions that you have developed to evaluate the fuel consumption. And then when the search is finished, it will give the results back to you and you will work on displaying the results. So this will be used in hand in assignment number two for you, which is the crown jewel of this course. Here we can see the results while we are running the solver. So we're starting at iteration zero and then the number of iterations progresses. And we can see that the fuel consumption is being reduced while we're searching for new and better solutions. The thing that's interesting is that we can, by only adjusting the gearbox, we can get a 5% improvement in the fuel economy of the vehicle. This should be put in perspective that the industry is hunting improvements of 0.5%. The message here is that a lot of work goes into selecting the right gearbox for the vehicle. So there's a lot of design work being done to improve the vehicle fuel consumption. Another view of the results is the analysis of what is the solver doing? How is it modifying the gear ratio? So here we see the gear ratio from number, gear number one, two, three, four, and five. And you can see how it's changing the gear ratios to get the engine operating condition we can see how it's testing different parameter values for the decision parameters that we have and it finally ends up here. The problem is very complex and it's not convex. That's why you're seeing that there's a lot of jumps here while it's testing the fuel economy. And we cannot guarantee global optimum in many engineering applications. So one of the things that is important for you to work with when you work with optimization is you need to make sure that you're not stuck in a bad local minimum. And one way to help this is to make several runs from different initial guesses and see that they all end up in a good point. Another message is that the optimizer shamelessly exploits all means that it has to do adjustments. The solution to an optimization problem is always an extreme point. And this extreme point might not necessarily be good for other reasons like for example the drivability. You would see here that the gear number one has uh, been adjusted so that it will be actually more difficult to start the vehicle. While gear number two, three and four have been adjusted to uh, gear ratios that are fairly close to each other. So then vehicle in this case might not be very drivable or fun to drive, but it's fuel optimized. This illustrates the multi-dimensional problem that you need to work with as engineers in the field here. It's very challenging, but it's also very fun to work with them. Coming to the final part, we have seen that many of the questions we're posing we cannot solve by just making hand calculations. We need to have computer tools to help us solve them. There are many tools that are used for study the energy consumption of different vehicle propulsion systems. We have the QSS that you're using here. The second tool, Advisor, was one of the tools that were mostly used in the childhood of hybrid electric vehicles when they were investigating a lot of different uh, hybrid concepts to evaluate which type of concept would be the most promising for the future. This was developed by the National Renewable Energy Lab in the US and then AVL got the contract to commercialize it as a commercial package. So you can buy advisor from AVL. We have PSAT which is a tool from Argonne National Labs that is also developed to support analysis. Then we have Alpha and Vecto. Alpha is the advanced light duty powertrain and hybrid analysis tool that was developed by the Environmental Protection Agency in the US. Vecto is a vehicle energy consumption calculation tool that is used in the European Union with special focus on heavy duty vehicles. All manufacturers have their own in-house tools. For example, Volvo has a tool that's called VSIM for Volvo simulation and Scania has a tool that they call virtual truck and bus tool. These are also put in whether or not they are quasi-static. The QSS and advisor are both quasi-static while the advisor has also a dynamic part where the maximum acceleration of a vehicle is evaluated in the forward part while quasi-static is used for the fuel consumption estimations. PSAT, Alpha, Vectors, VSIM and VTAB are all dynamic tools. PSAT uh, has a nice graphical interface where you can insert the part. Here you have the vehicle, the wheel, the transmission, planetary gearbox and you have combustion engine with auxiliary devices and then you have the 
electric part here with the big battery and you have the power consumption of the vehicle in general and you have generator and electric machines that are operating on the Planetary Gearbox. Advisor from AVL has also a graphical user interface and a lot of data for different components. For example, vehicle components, they have different vehicles stored. With these, you get a drop down menu and you can select vehicle, you can select uh, engine, you can select after treat, you can select uh, what type of battery you have, electric machines, etc. etc. So, one of the nice things with Advisor is that you have access directly to a lot of vehicle parameters that you can use to make a lot of different evaluations. The information from AVL I will not read, but you can find it on the slide. This now concludes our lecture number three, and I'm looking forward to the query and answer session that we will have at 10 o'clock. So welcome and see you there. Bye.